So, as promised, we held off on this for the second video, and now we're going to zoom in and look at what happens when we have x plus 3 times x minus 3. So here we are doing this the long way, and after doing it the long way, then we should be able to fill in the product of a sum and a difference. So what this means is it's the product, so we're multiplying something with a plus sign and then something with a minus sign. So here's the multiplication that's implied between the two, here's the sum part, and here's the difference part. And I bring that up because if you're being forced to memorize what these terms mean, and you read product of a sum and a difference, you'd never really understand why those words connect to this equation. So yeah, that's exactly what we have going on here. And I'm doing this the long way, foiling first, outer, inner, last. And I'm doing this quickly because I think you're comfortable by now. x squared minus 3x plus 3x minus 9. And look what we have here. We have opposite signs for the same quantity. And when these opposite signs for the same quantity um, match up, and you know, notice that it's not just with plus and minus. They have to be the same here and there. So this would be A, well, that would be B, and this would be A, well, that would be B. These guys cancel out, and I'm left with x squared minus 9. I'm going to do a couple more, but I don't want you to even write these. I'm just going to go real fast with them. So if I had x plus 2 times x minus 2, I would get x squared minus 2x plus 2x minus 4. And these terms would be canceling out, and I just get those leftovers. And it's going to always be this number squared minus this number squared. So what this means is I could have thought of this as being x squared minus 2 squared, and it would have jived with what we got at the end. So the product of a sum and a difference is going to have the appearance of a plus b times a minus b. And when I multiply that out, I get a squared minus b squared. They immediately give us one that's ugly, and they shuffle it around, putting the minus sign first and then the plus sign. But I know that this quantity of 11x minus 8x squared follows what we need to use and apply this formula. So we can immediately say that this will be the quantity 11x squared minus the other quantity 8x squared. And I said that dramatically because this whole thing is my b. So as I write that exponent, that exponent is different from the formula exponent that gets thrown here. I have 121x squared minus 64x to the fourth power. If you are unsure where that came from, do it a second time going about it the long way, where you just foil the whole thing out. Because if you foil the whole thing out, you'll still get it right. It'll just be more steps and a little bit more work involved. Just like the last one, this follows the plus minus pattern where our a and b terms matched up. And I say that because if this was 2x plus 4 times 2x minus 5, it doesn't matter that it's plus and then minus. They have to have the same values to cancel out. So this will end up being a, which is 2x squared minus b, which is 4 squared. And that leaves me with 4x squared minus 16. Those are the only examples, so if this is a short video and not enough info, hit me up with questions. But with that in mind, I think most of these examples will go all right. And then just to quickly touch on like kind of what has happened. This whole monomials chapter started with something by itself like that, and then grew into some polynomial action. Then you had to do some addition and subtraction, or maybe some multiplication. But the multiplication was just with one term. Then you became more comfortable multiplying you know, certain types of polynomials through 
um, polynomial by a polynomial. But then now we're looking at the special cases. And with these special products, it's nice because applying the uh, formulas that we have really let us do these quickly.